What did Paul mean when he said, work out your own salvation in fear and trembling? Hi, I'm Bob Wilkin with Grace Evangelical Society, and I have some good news for you. In Philippians chapter 2, in verse 12, Paul indeed told the Philippians to work out their own salvation in fear and trembling. But what did he mean? My wife Sharon loves to ask people what Paul meant in this verse, and if they give some sort of answer that says, well, you've got to work in order to have final salvation, you've got to work in order to make it to heaven, it's not enough to believe, you've got to also have works, then she knows that these people aren't believing the promise of John 3.16. Maybe they believed in the past, but they sure don't believe it now. Uh, recently, Sharon shared that with a, a friend, and that night Sharon and I were talking to my sister Pam, and they asked me to explain how I explain Philippians 2.12, so I'd like to share that with you. It's pretty simple. The word uh, salvation, soteria in Greek, only occurs three times in Philippians. And two of them that are clearly parallel are chapter 1 and verse 19 and chapter 2 and verse 12. In 2.12 it speaks of your own soteria, your own salvation. In chapter 1 and verse 19 it refers to my soteria, my deliverance. So in 119 Paul talks about his own deliverance and then in 2.12 he turns that to his readers, his believing readers who were supporting him. This letter to the Philippians is a, one of the prison epistles, and this church financially supported him, and it's a thank you letter. And so in 2.12, he's saying, work out your own soteria. Well, what did it mean in 119? That'll tell us what it means in 212. Well, in 119, Paul says, I know that this, that is, his Roman imprisonment, will turn out for my deliverance through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. What he's saying is not that his imprisonment is going to result in him being born again. He's already born again. That it's going to, he's not saying it's going to somehow result in his future salvation from hell. He already has that. That's guaranteed. Done deal. He was saved once and for all at the moment he believed in Christ, and he knew it. What he's talking about here is handling his persecution in a way that is honoring to God. And he's saying, I know that this imprisonment is going to bring glory to God. It's going to result in me being vindicated before Christ because I've handled these trials in a way that is honoring to God. And by vindication, I mean rewarded and commended by Christ at the judgment seat of Christ for what Paul did in his Roman imprisonment. When he turns over to chapter 2 and verse 12, he turns the tables and he says, Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, while he's in prison, work out your own soteria, your own salvation, with fear and trembling. The your own salvation is parallel to Paul speaking of my salvation. Just as he was being persecuted, he talks about in this letter that they were being persecuted. And they have the opportunity to glorify Christ through their persecution. And if they do, they too will be commended by Christ. And one day they will hear, well done, good and faithful servant, like Paul expects to hear if he perseveres in walking with Christ. Notice how this is brought out in the verses that follow, in verses 14 through 16. Paul says, do all things without grumbling or disputing. And by the way, in Romans 14, 10 through 12, that's tied with the judgment seat of Christ. That you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Well, this idea of being blameless and harmless 
and without fault, those are all judgment seat of Christ concepts. And Paul is saying that you might be this way at the judgment seat of Christ. Among whom you shine as lights in the world. Right now, the believers in Philippi were shining as lights in the world. Remember Jesus said, so let your light shine before men that they may glorify our Father who is in heaven. Well, the point is that at this point they were doing that, and he says, continue, work out your own salvation. And then he says in verse 16, holding fast the word of life, the message of life, that's the promise of everlasting life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that's a reference to the judgment seat of Christ, that I may not have run in vain or labored in vain. Well, that's the idea that if they persevere to the end of their lives through their persecution and glorify God, then they're going to be highly rewarded and Paul will be rewarded for the work he had done among them because he discipled them. And so when Paul says, work out your own salvation in fear and trembling, he's saying, look, realize you're going to appear before Christ one day and he's going to evaluate you and long to hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Their eternal destiny was already set. It was already established. They knew they were once saved and always saved, once and for all. But they didn't know what the outcome would be at the judgment seat of Christ. And so they were to persevere and shine as lights in the world that they might hear, well done, good and faithful servant. If you like what you heard today, click on the red subscribe button. And remember, keep grace in focus. Mm -hmm.